everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, excited to talk to you about Kubernetes, logging, DevOps, all those wonderful words. Uh, excited to have Lee with us. So I'd introduce myself. My name is Dan Garfield. I'm the, uh, among other things, chief evangelist for CodeFresh. Um, if you haven't heard of CodeFresh before, uh, some of our customers include companies like Giphy and, and Citrix, Arm, Figaro. Um, and we've built over three and a half million images. Uh, those are Docker images. So um, very excited to be presenting today uh, about uh, uh, Kubernetes and DevOps and, and um, glad we can have Lee with us uh, to bring all of his expertise on logging. So Lee, why don't you introduce yourself? Yep. Hello everyone, my name is Lee Liu. I'm the CTO and co-founder of LogDNA. Um, LogDNA has been growing uh, really, really uh, rapidly recently. We have um, now over 2,000 customers uh, who have been with us. Um, been really awesome so far. Uh, hope, hope to see and uh, introduce a lot of you to LogDNA today. Great, so uh, let's talk about what we're gonna cover today. Yeah, so a couple of points, this is a very high level. Uh, we want to keep this uh, so that there's plenty of time for questions at the end, but this is the, the structure and the outline for today. We're going to go through each point, um, and yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead, we'll take it away. Uh, so first, before we kind of jump into the, um, the, the how Kubernetes handles logging and how this fits in, uh, in the kind of normal development and DevOps workflow, you have the problems of deploy, monitor, and fix. And um, this is kind of why we decided to partner up on this webinar and talk together because CodeFresh will help you with the deployment, will help you with issuing fixes, and LogDNA has a great solution for monitoring. Uh, and so this is kind of a cycle you go through where you deploy something, you monitor it, you find issues, you fix it, you deploy it again, you monitor it. And, and so on and so forth. Um, so that's kind of the high level of where this all fits in together. And uh, so let's just jump into kind of the why logging is important. Yeah, so um, logging, as many of you know, um, is uh, a really good tool for, for troubleshooting uh, different things into your apps. Um, we use it ourselves, uh, it helps mainly to reduce a lot of the, the pain, pain points of having a black box, which is how um, most applications that run today, you know, you don't really know what your apps are doing. Logging basically helps you uncover some of the, the, the ticker tape, if you will, of how, how those things work. Um, beyond this, you know, a, a lot of how logging, especially in the Kubernetes, Kubernetes landscape is, um, you don't need to give all your developers access to kubectl or your production clusters. They can now use logging in a more controlled environment where different people can get different access so that uh, you don't have to set up crazy RVAC or any sort of permissions on committees to make that happen. So um, here's how most companies determine what their logging needs are. They can come from generally like a security compliance perspective. So, for LogDNA, we are currently, we are HIPAA compliant. We are also SOC2 compliant. Uh, for HIPAA specifically, we, we will sign uh, what's called a BAA. Basically what that tells us is that we believe our product is so secure that um, should something happen and we get hacked, we are actually legally liable for it to take that on. So security is very important to us. Uh, so we also have a privacy shield that is uh, sort of like the precursor to GDPR. We are working on GDPR and PCI compliance currently. Uh, the next up is gonna be retention. So most logging providers on the cloud, um, there's a fixed amount of period on how log how long logs are are live live for. So when you send us a line of logs, how long, how many days or or, or weeks before that log line is deleted out of our system? So typically for logging in, we have uh, a number of different packages. We have a standard seven day retention, fourteen day, and thirty days. Uh, but we can go longer if needed. So it really depends on what your needs are and what kind of auditing uh, log levels you need for, for the future. Um, we do have things like S3 archiving. So, um, you know, like 30 days of retention mainly for how long you can have to search your logs live. But some customers, you know, they, they're like, hey, I'm good for the seven days of live logs and everything after that, you can just zip onto an S3 bucket and then we'll get, I'm good, good from that point forward. Um, and then in the, uh, the last two things are just mainly about how much devolving data you're sending us. We found that um, depending on the company and, and how, how, how well structured their logs are, um, 
the volume is, is going to be what really, really determines your cost for most log management solutions. So uh, if you're logging, for example, like a gig a month, that'll be really, really cheap. If you're logging like 10 terabytes a day, it'll, it'll, the numbers will definitely get up there. So it really depends on your traffic mainly and what type of, um, what type of logs and how verbose your logs are. And there's kind of a balance to be maintained there, right? The more verbose the logs, the more useful they are. Mm. But uh, of course, then you have to store them and then how long you want to store them. So it's about trying to figure out what level of logging you need to be effective and be able to identify issues, monitor things, and then go back and identify the root causes if needs be. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, the last item is, up, is very more, very much important to, to many, many CPOs and, and, and executive level uh, staff. Um, we, so one thing that we do just a little bit differently with LogDNA is that we don't have what I call bucket-based pricing where, where you have, uh, like for example, every month you get a bucket of 10 gigs or 50 gigs or 100 gigs or a terabyte. We are a metered billing provider, very much like AWS. If you use one gig, we charge you for one gig. If you use 2.34 gigs, we will charge you for 2.34 gigs. And so um, we found that actually with that, uh, surprisingly, a lot of customers who have been holding backlogs because they're nearing their one terabyte bucket with their current, current provider, for example, they, when they come to us, they're like, okay, so we're, our terabyte has stayed the same, but now we can, you know, loosen it to like 1.2 so that, you know, mm -hmm. and not have to worry that um, the extra logs are going to push them over to the next tier, essentially. All right. So... I just want to go over very quickly just the, the different types of log management available. So log DNA is the, is the first one currently. We are a cloud logging solution. So basically, you send your data directly from your servers or from your IoT devices or from your apps directly to us uh, in a cloud. And we have a number of different ways to take in logs, which I'll go into in, in a little bit. Um, the second one is an on-prem uh, provider. Basically, what this really means is that you can download and deploy logging, oh, sorry, um, a logging solution onto your own servers. So you, you manage these, um, they're typically, it doesn't have to be like on-prem as in like in your own data center necessarily. On-prem could be like on AWS private cloud or on GKE or any sort of thing. Basically you control and manage the servers. And then something newer uh, that's sort of come onto the landscape recently is uh, multi-cloud. Now get into a little bit about that. So it's basically a, a hybrid of both. You can have some of your logs stored by a cloud provider and some of your logs stored on your own servers. And then through a single pane of glass, you can see which, um, which ones and, and, and search sort of all your different sources wherever they are. So this is really useful for, for situations where say you have uh, five data centers around the world uh, or five offices and each of them are logging separate types of logs. But when you do search, normally you have to go to each of those, each of those sites and then search that particular one. Um, and then if, so if, you know, if that number grows, you, you are going to multiple places. So what multi-cloud does is that uh, you can start search from one interface and depending on your own level of access, you might be able to access things in Europe, for example, or things in, in Asia. And so multi-cloud, um, unlocks basically some of those functionalities to let you be flexible uh, searching between your own sort of on-prem deployments versus uh, a hybrid of on-prem and cloud deployments. And so this is one of those things that uh, LogDNA is actually working on uh, uh, in the future where we, we're hoping to be uh, on-prem, which we are currently in beta for. We have a downloadable version of our product as well uh, in, in private beta and the multi-cloud will be the next item we're going to be tackling. And finally, I just want to mention there's, as a, there's a number of self-managed sort of, sort of self-hosted solutions out there. Um, ELK is definitely one of the most popular ones. Uh, you basically, you can take a couple of different components of, um, from Elastic and then be able to build your own Elastic stack uh, log management system. Just want to get through some, right off the bat, just some uh, best practices for Kubernetes logging specifically. Um, there's many best practices of logging, but this, these are all specific to Kubernetes. 